Hello and welcome to Let's Play Heroes of Might and Magic. I'm Devane and last time we had just finished up the first scenario in the campaign as Lord Iron Fist the Knight. Now it's time to move on to the second scenario in the campaign, the Archipelago. Your way to the mainland is blocked by the Archipelago of the Ancients a series of four large islands, each held by a different lord. The opposition must all be subdued, and they are better led this time. Boats are a necessity, use them wisely. Um, despite what <laughs> is said in the intro, you don't actually need boats. They come in handy, and we are quite exposed to attack from the sea being on these islands over there town so close to them but it's not a true necessity in fact it is highly unlikely that we will probably not be using boats at all but we'll, I'll explain more about what's going on in this scenario because as always it's time to start building up our night forces we are Tyro the Knight. And we will start as always by building up an archery range. Yeah. So that we can get a reasonable starting army. And then... Let's see... We'll go and get higher our second hero. Lord Kilburn. You'll get to recognise the various heroes because they all come from a shared pool. In essence, the heroes are all mercenaries and you just hire whoever's available. case we will send Tyro out to start fighting as before as I said in the last video I will strive to play with my main hero being the hero of the faction that we are using in this way it does allow for a greater sense of replaying the, between the various campaigns Now these peasants are a very ah. simple army, so the first few fights in the first few scenarios ah. are actually quite easy. Ah. Use useful for building up speed. What you will see, however, is Unlike the last scenario, our wood, our wood mill is actually guarded by peasants. So you do at least need some form of starting army to start attacking and requiring, acquiring the mines that you need to build up your town. And that's our first turn. We will go this way now. Ah. Ah. Allow us to uh, take and yet another fight with minimal losses, ah. as in no losses. By the way, thank you for everyone who uh, watched my previous Let's Play. Right now, this is still far too early for me to be 
counting likes. So at the moment, views will actually what I'll be going for. But as always, if you do enjoy this series, be sure to comment, share, like, and subscribe. Now, let's see the well. I've said this a uh, fairly basic uh, build up for the knights, so they will have a fairly strong army within a week or so. Unfortunately, Heroes of Might and Magic did not include the uh, quick combat option, which would become, well, very much a staple in later editions of the franchise. That does mean that if it starts dragging on, I may actually end up cutting or pausing during the fights. Ah. But if you actually enjoy seeing me fight or foul to fight, as the case may be, be sure to let me know. And we will send Lord Kilburn to come scout down here a bit and while we'll continue our build up of the Night Town with some pikemen. Now, unlike the previous scenario, we are extremely exposed. And that means that we are with a single base, if we're giving all of our troops to a single knight, we could easily find ourselves being left unguarded and therefore vulnerable to sneak attacks. For example, an enemy hero could easily come round here on a boat and park themselves pretty much outside the castle and then take it with relative ease while there's no defenders. Um, therefore, in the first few weeks, what we will be looking to do is to keep our main hero close enough to be able to defend. Because there's nothing more annoying than suffering a setback by losing your first your first main town early in the game. Sometimes it's enough that you can end up being able to unrecover from it. So let's see what we got. Uh, I didn't take the pipe then, did I? Never mind. In fact, I might just head back so that we can at least pick up, try and pick up a full army before we start attacking the. Uh, creature, other creatures in the area. Right now we want to build up a few weeks for our main hero while exploring with our secondary so that we can go and well so that we're within range to defend should the worst happen. There are two other towns on this 
island. And the main aim for this video is to try and capture at least one of them. It's not strictly important if if we don't, but the sooner we can catch them, the sooner we can start getting our resources. Now, rogues can be annoying in first few turns, so it Generally, unless you've got a decent starting army, you want to try and avoid rushing artifacts straight away because the main skill with rogues is that they attack without retaliation and they can easily decimate your starting armies. However, once you've got access to at least a second week or a number of de dwellings like we have here, they stop being pretty much a challenge for us. And you can pretty much attack them without losses. Go Medal of Distinction, which gives us plus one morale. If you remember, knights get a bonus to morale in any way in this game. So we've actually got quite high morale. For now. Let's see if we can get that crystal down now. I might just save up the gold for now, trying to get towards our Paladins. It's not strictly important right now. While we're still trying to be within a reasonable area for defensive purposes. Try and get up here. Come down here. You will see this is the room gates, which are basically a teleporter. Each of these four islands has one room gate and teleport randomly between the various room gates. It's a way to get between islands without needing boats, so despite what was said in the scenario. Boats aren't a necessity, they just they just can be an easy way to do sneak attacks and various. But you'll find them mostly used by the enemies. Meanwhile we want to try and see if we can pick up some of this crystal. And um, getting past those walls with Lord Kilburn isn't gonna happen. But we should hopefully be able to get round. And down here you will see a town which provides us with income and some, possibly some basic troops and can be upgraded to another castle. There are two other towns as I just said before all of which can be upgraded to castles and that should give us enough of a base that our knight troops will be able to attack our enemies. However, what we will want to do is make sure that we have at least one hero for home and defence and possibly a second hero if we can build one up as some sort of coast guard 
while our main hero will go and through the rune gates and see about attacking one of the other islands. Don't really need another night by now. So, I don't think we'll bother. Let's go and attack the wolves. Now, wolves can be quite dangerous. Because they attack twice. And we've only got three knights. And while it is tempting to come over and charge, unless we can kill them in one go, which is unlikely at this point, we may find ourselves basically being eaten alive. Step away, and then finally one can attack us. Oh, two, sorry. See, we've already lost our first. But we should be able to come down here. You can see you there hiding behind the trees, but we've got our defense up there anyway. And of course, peasants where they will take lots of losses in mass stacks they can do quite a bit of damage I mean peasants li literally have one hit point but do one point of damage so that's 139 points of damage regardless whereas Calvary's where they have a lot more hit points of 30 hit points they do between 5 to 10 points of damage so we will basically be doing between 20 10 and 20 points of damage which is a lot makes us a lot less them a lot less reliable than a stack of peasants when attacking <laughs> meanwhile as you can see wolves do between 3 to 5 points of damage so and since they do that twice they can be quite devastating luckily we've got the row so we should be able to finish these off without too many losses. I'm quite happy with that. That's and we increase our attack skill. Obelisk. You come upon an obelisk made from a type of stone you've never seen before. Staring at it intensely, the smooth surface suddenly changes to an inscription. The inscription is a piece of an, a lost ancient map. Quickly, you copy down the keys and the description vanishes as abruptly as it appears. There we go. This, this is the puzzle map. And by, by going to obelisks, you will slowly reveal the puzzle map so you can find where the ultimate artifact is buried. You don't need to get the ultimate artifact to win a scenario, except in one case where that's the whole point of the campaign uh, the hub campaign scenario but get if you can find it and dig it up you'll have a powerful artifact that will massively boost one of your four primary skills the only downside is that once you have dug it up or someone has dug it up if you lose it even to another hero they will oft, it will often disappear so it's pretty much a one time deal in that case so you find yourself kind of wanting to protect that hero because although in some cases especially if you get the ultimate shield which provides plus 12 defense they can be nigh on unstoppable anyway uh, we're just building up our just going to build up our funds for now and then see about where we want to go we'll come back down here come 
over here. Yes. We'll try and see if we can get that crystal. It's been 20 minutes so far, so should look towards seeing where we're going to go and maybe thinking about wrapping this up. Um so what we got what we got there? We got one pike man and some peasants. One pike man some peasants. Um might save my money for considering we're looking to get through and see if we can get Lord Kilburn some forces next turn. If we can start getting him to head in that direction that would be great. There we go. Now, so what we'll probably do is let's look. Um, yeah. In fact, you don't necessarily need. Lord Kilburn there when we could easily hire another hero to defend the castle should it come under attack as long as there are other troops there so what we might do is just leave the troops there we go here we go got an attacker there see what I mean and come around here and launch up here but it is day one so what we can do is come in here and spend the gold to recruit as many troops as possible and then decide if we want to see about attacking I mean we could possibly attack her and stop her there and stop her from rampaging so we might do that and which gives us the boat to kind of stay and block that bit ashore is probably what their most useful thing is right now and then we can use Lord Kilburn to basically hang around and defend while we send Taicho to attack the second town there that sounds like a plan so we will do that Now, the sorcerer says flyers. Flyers basically go are very fast. However, how cavalrys are faster, and that has allowed us to uh, move them in a way to block them from reaching the archers. Now we basically want to just charge. The enemies and she, the sorceress has fled, leaving the boat behind. Now the boat has ta probably taken up resources, uh, as has the hero, which having fled, they why well, she can be recruited. She loses her armies, and uh, needs to build needs to build them up. But. Well, it sucks to be her really when thinking about it. Let's come down here. Let's see what we can do here. There 
we go. We should be able to defeat these fairly handily, in fact. There goes our presence, the unspoken superstars. Quite literally, because they were often extremely undervalued. Well, quite fragile. If you have enough of them, especially when you get a lot of them for free, they can do quite a bit of damage. Of course, once you start getting paladins, it's they're pretty much the first ones to go. So they're basically there for a mixture of cannon fodder and to basically bulk out the flanks. But hey, that's not necessarily a bad thing, is it? Okay, well, change of plan then. We have a knight over here, so we might go and engage him. While picking up the crystal. Can't really go anywhere except back on the boat. Peasants for the greater glory. And we've got sufficient that we could consider ourselves to have two mains right now. There we go. That's it. Please leaving his boat behind. Not a problem. We'll take that. It's better than nothing. Probably come here. Grab some more peasants. Build up our forces. coming over here and while we're down here we might look in grab the obelisk and see where else we discover definitely looking like somewhere with lava so once we get to that we should start thinking about whether it matches or not of course we could just be having too much fun killing everyone not really much of a problem either way when you think about it and we do have enough to buy paladins which is good we don't need to recruit them but it does mean that we now have a seriously powerful some serious powerful troops in our starting castle which is always good um, this is Vesper who's a warlock so what we will do we'll probably send Lord Kilbermo over towards to try and engage him while continuing on our plan of taking over this town without making hero. Rush towards the enemy. Right, and these are just the forces of the, of the town, which are neutral. Allow us just to take it over. Grab them, hide in here. Pick up some more peasants. And we're pretty much done. Can't really do anything in here other than try and upgrade the town to a castle, which will allow us to build other towns and increase our income. Fortunately, it takes a lot of gold, so we will need to start working on that. Meanwhile, we will look on getting a 
Lord Kilburn over here. What day are we on? Day 5. Lord Kilburn decides to run up here and we've got uh, basically two sets of heroes coming down here to cause chaos and be annoying. And indeed it is annoying. Now, we, sh we need to kind of get back towards to defend our town, so we will do that. Not Meanwhile, we can send Lord Kilburn around. Dwarves! No, we don't have any room for dwarves, so we won't bother. Meanwhile, we will leave this, and given how close we are, probably play it until day one for the next week, and then call it a day here. Yeah. Which will allow us to. What day we're on? We're on day seven. We might just come back over here and pick up some peasants next turn if necessary. God, the castles. See, see what I mean about the Paladins though. Even though it's crystal to, it's crystal to build the cathedral, it's not crystal required to pipe them. However, other troops will often also need the special resources they use to build their buildings. So, even though the Paladins are the weakest of the top tier units, the Knight will, all, will be able to build them as long as they've got gold. Now, the other thing as well which you'll notice in here is that you, each army has five slots, but there are six tier creatures. And as, as such, what normally happens is at least one of the units is, ends up being left behind. In this case, we will leave behind the peasants for our paladins. And we'll just leave it there, I think. Good, I oh, could attack her. Could probably attack her and get back in actually, thinking about it. Now, I think the other one has disappeared somewhere. I might get in here, attack her, and then return to the castle. like at any of the other heroes she will probably free, flee in the first turn if given the opportunity. There we go, she caused some damage but we got rid of her so she's no longer a threat now and we can come here and protect ourselves. Should Vespa decide to come and attack us? And meanwhile, that should be it for this turn. So let's see what happens. Took okay, out, got back on the boat. Oh, that's not good. We have a month of the plague, which means all the populations are half, and there are no other creature growths. This means we have to do a week with the creatures that we've got so we will see how that turns out
when we continue next time. But for now, I think we will save it. Let's save it as. Uh, save it as LP two. Save it. So actually, this has been the bane. Saying um, say goodbye, and as always, if you like what you hear, see, feel free to share, like, comment.